Welcome to Step by Step. Every Saturday at 4 p.m., I'm painting and taking you along on the journey, step by step. Today we're going to be doing a simple project using some leftover doors from a china cabinet. We're going to be using Dixie Bell's silk paint. It's their all-in-one mineral paint and the color is clunk. This paint is really different from Dixie Bell's original formula chalk mineral paint. That has a chalky feel, whereas this is a much silkier, hence the name, texture. I'm going to be adding the glass back in these doors when I'm done painting, and I'll be adding some transfers and some paint to make this look like a mirror. Here I'm using Vintage Dreams Transfer from Redesign with Primo. So, this bit is a little bit lengthy, but um, it's kind of important to show you how the transfer is applied, especially when you're going over uneven areas. So what I did was laid the transfer where I wanted it, and I first started to work on the glass. And as you can see, I'm just letting the transfer go up on the sides there. Um, the reason why I did that, I did not want the transfer to stick to the glass, so I had to be careful, uh, or stick to the, the frame before it was ready. So, as you see, I trimmed it there in the corner, and now I'm working in all those grooves of the molding around that frame to make sure that I get it laid in there flat. And I'm just using that stick Redesign has a transfer tool, which is really helpful to get in those areas as well. Um, but sometimes I get super excited to work on my project, so I just grab whatever I have. <laughs> so I use the stick. They come in every uh, tube of transfers. So I just continue to work it, and when I get to that corner, I'm just really careful to lay everything down and just fold that other side over top of it and then you never notice the difference. Don't be afraid of transfers. They're really easy to apply, but situations like this when you're working around drawers or um, the corners of things or if you want the transfer to go over multiple surfaces, you just have to be a little bit tricky in your placement and your application and that's where uh, trimming helps. And don't be in a rush to do this, and you wanna make sure your paint is thoroughly dry. That is um, some of the biggest fails that we've seen with transfers is when the paint is not dry. Um, it just won't adhere when there's any moisture in that paint. So again, take your time with this step. Usually the transfers adhere very easily to glass. So you just kind of start picking up the corners of the transfer then and just gradually peeling it up. I know it seems like I'm spending an awful long time on this and through the course of this demo I might actually skip over a step, but this is a good opportunity for me to remind you that I have tutorials um, all along my YouTube channel of different things. So I ended up adding some molds to this and it was actually uh, necessity was the mother of invention in that case I did it because when I um, put the two together I actually ran some nails through the front of the piece <laughs> so I had to uh, skillfully uh, camouflage them so uh, moral of the story is that I do have videos on my YouTube channel of molds mold making and in, I go into a lot of detail. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos and then you can just do a search. So um, I, I think that you'll enjoy going back over those videos. So hope you subscribe if you aren't already. And also we are we near we already got made 525 subscribers now so we're on our way to a thousand. And if you visit my Instagram page, Le Vintage Decor, check it out. There's a contest to win $500 worth of paint and 
it's transfers and molds and candles. It's really a cool bundle of things. Yay, so the transfer is off. And then you just take your hand and just burnish the transfer a little bit. That just simply means you wanna press it down and just make sure there aren't any bubbles in it. So I can hear a, a little bubbling, you know, so I wanna make sure that I flatten that out. So here's what it looks like. I actually use two different transfers. So I use them all around and then the other one, you are my refuge and my shield, and I have put my hope in you, in your word. That is a transfer also from Redesign with Prima. So now I've flipped it over and I'm gonna do a mirror uh, on the back. So right now I'm spraying vinegar water on there. Um, and you just use a regular household sprayer. It's just a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water. And when you spray it, it beads up. So now I'm using Krylon's Looking Glass spray paint and I'm just going to spray the surface and wherever the vinegar water was the paint won't stick. So you just want to spray it and then let it dry. So this doesn't give you complete coverage, but now what I'm doing is I'm just pointing out some areas where there, I, I let it dry overnight and you can see that it just gives that look of an old mirror. But now, um, remember we're on the back, so I took some Dixie Belle Moonshine Metallics and Rosé and just um, stippled over those areas in the back uh, where there were kind of holes. So that way that color will peek through to the front side. And then after that was dry, I did a second coat again of the um, looking glass spray paint. Now if you pick this up and hold it up at this point, you'll see it's still a little sheer. So this is, the next step is kind of crucial. So I'm just taking Dixie Belle's caviar. You can take any dark, uh, color if you want, but I've experimented with some different things and my preference is the black. Um, it just, I've used dark gray and I really prefer to use black no matter what the, um, the front looks like. So um, first you paint one way and then you paint the other way. And the reason you do this is because when you paint the first way and you hold it up, you can sort of see brush strokes. So this ensures that you're uh, covering everything. Now, here's the part I skipped where I applied molds. Um, but now you're getting to see the, the cool part. So remember, you can look these up on the, the YouTube channel. So what I'm doing right now, so I painted over them using the silk, and now I'm using uh, Dixie Belle's Gilding Wax in zinc. And I'm just using my finger at first, and I'm going over uh, the high spots on the roses. And then I come back in with a brush and I do the outside edges of them to give it a little bit of a halo. And I really like that effect. Uh, the zinc is a great complement to the mirror. And then the uh, brush around the outside edge just kind of gives it a shadowy effect. I, I really was pleased. I just kind of went with it and was very pleased with the results on that one. Sometimes you just uh, want to use your instincts and you don't know how it's going to turn out. You have an idea, but um, I was pretty pleased in this instance as to how it ended up looking. So I'm just using a detail brush. And then in some places where I almost felt like there was too much, um, I used a brush that didn't have any um, of the gilding wax on it and just kind of um, used a circular motion to spread it around. That stuff kind of stuck on there right away. So that part didn't do me much good, but I still liked the effect. Now I'm using Dixie Belle's Chameleon Wax. This stuff's cool. I'm using Cactus and I'm also using the Lilac and the Apricot. 
So I'm just going over the leaf parts and the tops of the buds with um, the cactus color. And then I'm coming back in with the, uh, I think I used the lilac first. That's another leaf. And it doesn't hurt to put any of the pink on the leaves as well, because as you know, in nature, you see sometimes red in the green of a leaf or green in the in a bud. So um, be artfully mixing. So now I have the lilac. This, you know, is very subtle. It doesn't show up really great. Um, I have found, found the most impact with these waxes to be on uh, black, but I really like the effect that it gave on these roses as well. It just pulled out the colors in the transverse. And I'm using my fingers to just spread it around. I also wish you could smell this wax. It's amazing. <laughs> I love the way it smells. So one step too, after I did the waxing that I don't know that I covered, is I also took um, the caviar uh, or the black paint with a detail brush and just touched up some areas um, of the transfer of the wording that I had sort of um, compromised with my transfers and my, not the transfer so much, but the um, molds and the paint that I put on them. So remember that was a recovery. <laughs> this probably would not have had those pieces on there had I not made the mistake of driving the nail through. But anyway, I did put um, backing on the on the back of it. I, I used wood glue to put the pieces together and then those dreaded nails, about five of them. And so that held it solid and then I used um, some hanging brackets to and some wire, some picture frame wire to put a hanger on the back of it. So I just continue to use the gilding waxes and I really think it gave it a, a real finishing touch and a real polish and an added oomph. I can report that I listed this immediately on my Instagram page and it is already sold. so easy to add these extra details and these products just make it just so enjoyable so I hope that you will not just be a spectator and dive right into this sport especially if you share uh, check out my Instagram page and share these videos um, and follow the instructions to win the prize package then you can really uh, have a lot of toys to play with <laughs> You can also order them from my uh, website or the affiliate link in the description box.